Today I'm going to be tying golden stone nymphs using Pro Sport Fishers nymph shells and rib in a Pro Sport Fisher nymph rib kit. Can't really get that in focus there. But today we're going to be tying golden stones. Now I have a jar of some bugs I collected out of the Metolius and Deschutes River. Let's show you a natural golden stone. And as you can see, some of these have like really light bellies with the dark brown shells or uh, thorax segments. These, these bugs are pretty much the size of the hook that I'm using here and the shape. So I'm using a Daiichi 1730 bent shake hook. I already went ahead and took the liberties of getting things started for us here today so that way we're not wasting too much time on my really long fly tying videos. I ran a course of three layers of flat lead wire building up to a taper. And I've already started a thread base for the underbody. First step I want to do is tie in some tails. And I like to use the uh, quill of a furnace hackle down where the base is flat and wide. And that flat side is going to aid in getting us to tie this onto the side of the fly, just like you would use or tie in a goose biot, which I like these qu quills better than biots. They just look a little more realistic to me than that really wide and godly biot. But use a biot if you want. Most everybody does. This is how I tie it. I've got those two tails tied in on the side. And to get that dark back, I use Buster Thin Skin. I cut a little piece out of that that's uh, about three, three millimeters wide or so. And I'm going to cut a little taper on the end. This taper is where we're going to tie this on the back. So shiny side up, get that piece of thin skin tied on the back top. Check your thread position, make sure everything's fine there. Gives ourselves a little glint in the water. I'm also going to lash on a piece of flat mylar on top of that thin skin. So the mylar's on top of it. And we'll just tuck that out of the way in my little holder. So I'll get that on there nice and secure. Remove a piece of the nymph rib from the shell kit. And I like to just lash this on underneath stretch it a little bit as you tie it on, thin things down. That's tied on and such so that when I make my first wraps around I want the rib to have the have the dark in the back. So I'll position that so that way when I get my first wrap that dark band is is in the back of the fly. Get that all secured tightly. Now the proper portion, pr pr proportion for a golden stone or most stone flies is that the first half here is the abdomen, the second half is the thorax. And these nymph shells are cut in such a way that each one of these sections is numbered, one, two, three, and there's a tab length that's on each one of these the tie-in tab and it is as long as it needs to be so that way when you place this on the very top the end of the tab goes right to the eye of the hook right here with that on this will be tied in the proper location on the length and you can see that that's already at halfway point if your hook is slightly longer you can adjust that a little bit but what you want is the back of your thorax segment to be right exactly at the midpoint. So most of that thought, forethought, and stuff is figured out for you already in these nymph shells, which takes uh, and makes the intermediate or entry level fly tire gives them an option or the ability to start tying really realistic flies. For the accomplished fly tire, of course, it simplifies the process that used to take us a long time by cutting these things out by hand using wing burners or, 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 or cutters to uh, make our bug sections. 
So I've dubbed on some uh, Diamond Bright Golden Stone Blend Spirit River dubbing here. And I'm going to dub up an underbody, give myself some room to work. Get this back there. And I'm going to get myself dubbed up to the halfway point, maybe just a little bit beyond. And if everything's working just right, you should only have to take seven wraps of this nymph rib to move forward. But we're not going to do that just yet. I'm just going to get that out of the way. The next step, I'm going to pull this mylar forward, lay that over the top, tie that off exactly where that hook bends, 50% 50, 50 mark. The thin skin then is going to come and be brought taut over the top. And then I'll tie that off, that halfway point. We can trim away the waist, secure that down. You can see that mylar still kind of shows through that thin skin. And now that we wrap this nymph body forward, seven or eight good wraps. Carefully spacing these out so you get a nice segmented look. At this point in time, I know I'm going to be in my thorax section, so I can tie that off. There's enough left over here, I can tie another fly with it. Maybe I can tie a caddis fly with that or something, that little tag end. So for the thorax, I'm going to tie in sections. The first thing I want to do is build myself up a, a foundation to tie on. Tab number one, which is going to go on top of here, up to the eye of the hook, measure that out, and I can just tie that down, bring my thread back. Section number two, I'm going to dub again. This time I'm going to wrap this dubbing slightly back over the top of section number one, which helps kind of hold that down, move forward, and then I'm going to take tab number two off of my kit, and they're numbered. Even old guys like me with glasses can read these numbers. I cut that, liberate it from the, from the kit. Just like with tab number one, I'm going to place that on the top, move forward, and measure to where Tab number two sits right on top and comes up to just the eye of the hook. And I'll tie that right on top of tab one in the same spot. Now I have four legs and two th thorax segments. Here's where things get a little different. Tab number three is tied in opposite of everything. It's tied in upside down and pointing forward and that tab is going to be placed right the end there. So I'll put my finger on that. If I don't drop it. With section number three tied into place, which is our head section, you can see that it's tied in upside down, pointing forward. We can begin to just dub what's going to be our head of the fly. And so again, like I did with section number one and number two, I'm just going to dub in back here and I'm going to work my way back over the thorax section number two just a little bit with some loose wraps that'll just hold that down into, into place. Make sure everything's aligned where you like it. Just small amounts on the thread. And we're not going to tie off a head near the eye of the hook as you would traditionally with a lot of other flies. But I'm going to fold this back and look for the neck, which is just between, I'll turn it so you can see, 
We got the head right here, and then the thorax plate with the legs. I'm gonna tie that off right at that neck point. Hold that on with my thumb. Just give it one or two good wraps. Turn it so you can see how that's looking. If you want to tie an antenna, here's where you could tie an antenna pointing forward right here, or you can tie it in just before you pull this forward. I'm not a fan of antenna, I don't need them. I've caught plenty of fish with flies that don't, don't have an antenna. So all I'm gonna do is just give it a good three turns of whip finish just to not build too much thread and bulk up. And that's a color that still manages the natural. And you'll wanna cement your your little thread off right there. And I also like to run a bead of UV epoxy on the top. So let me just get a, you know, just squeeze a touch of that out there. Get a little dubbing needle, and I can use to kind of coat the top of this off with, just to, so you can see that. Clean off some fuzz, a little fuzziness going on here. It's probably when you shoot HD video, you see everything. I'll just fire off a little uh, UV cure on that epoxy right there. And that bug looks like it's going to crawl out of my fly, my fly box. And that's all there is to it. So get yourself a realistic looking mean stone fly that's lighter on the belly, darker on the back, and it's going to crawl out of your fly box.